Throughout the course of history, hundreds and thousands of people have taken to the seas to grasp their chances at fortune. Piracy itself can be traced back to around the 14th century BC to around the Mediterranean region, and since then, piracy has been a near constant force in some regions of the world. What we understand as the golden age of piracy, with the iconic pirate captains, buccaneers, privateers, and frigates however, primarily took place between the 1650s and the 1730s. The general concept was the same, pirates took to the seas to rob the wealthy illegally in the hopes of making a name for themselves, along with heaps of treasure and gold. Some pirates were notorious for their brute force, some for their intelligence and business capabilities, but some stand out for just how fearsome they were. The names of some particular pirates have been spoken about infamously long after the pirates themselves have been lost to the annals of time, and that is the subject of today's video. We will be travelling to the golden age of piracy and beyond where we will be meeting some of history's most notorious and feared pirates, giving a profile of their most notable acts and why they were so notorious. We will meet the individuals that once made the seas echo with the sounds of their very names, striking pure terror into the hearts of locals, merchants and government officials alike. It is as dramatic a subject as it is fascinating. Join us as we take a look at the most feared pirates of all time. Welcome to Walk the Plank. John Rackham, more commonly known as Calico Jack, is to this day a historical household name, one of the most famous pirates to ever set sail, and with very good reason. Although he had a relatively short career, a more four years of plundering, he and his crew quickly grew to fame and notoriety after a slew of ruthless and successful acts of piracy out on the high seas around the Caribbean and the West Indies. Going by the pirate nickname Calico Jack due to his penchant for wearing bright calico clothing, he started his career as a quartermaster for the famed pirate Charles Vane, a man who we will be meeting in greater detail shortly. When Charles avoided conflict with a nearby French manor warship, which was loaded with expensive goods and riches, Calico Jack lost faith in him. Jack and the rest of the crew were eager to plunder the passing ship. Sure, it would have been a tough adversary, but the rewards would have been immense. After a vote, Jack and his crewmates kicked Charles off of his own ship, marooning him on an island in a mutinous act of control. Seizing his opportunity, Jack took control of the ship, with a new crew and an arsenal of ammunition at his command. As Jack made a name for himself, he took on more and more ambitious plundering opportunities. Starting out with small coastal vessels, he eventually started raiding large, powerful ships around the Bahamas, further building his fearsome reputation. One of his most notorious quarries, however, was a Spanish warship with a captured English sloop in tow that had entered the harbour of a small town in Cuba. Jack and his men were resting along the docks when the vessels pulled in and saw their opportunity. The Spanish reportedly attempted to target the pirates, but could not reach them as the tide was low, so they lowered their anchor and waited. The pirates needed to be dealt with before the ship could safely dock. Waiting for nightfall, Jack and his men rowed out to the captured English sloop in tow of the larger warship and slaughtered the men on board with ease. As they sailed off into the night aboard their bounty, the Spanish warship then began to target the wrong ship. Jack's old vessel now abandoned in the harbour. If there's one thing that Jack is famous for above all else though, it's his flag. Jack was the man who first flew the classic Jolly Roger flag, featuring a white skull in front of crossed cutlasses on a black background. Now synonymous with pirates across the globe, the flag would have been a terrifying sight on the horizon for any unprepared merchant vessel. Calico Jack was eventually captured towards the end of 1720 where he was put on trial. Convicted of piracy, he and his crew were subsequently hanged, with Jack's body moved to a gibbet, serving as a warning for any would-be pirates. Charles Vane may have been overpowered by Calico Jack and the rest of his men, but he was still a force to be reckoned with. Although his name isn't as widely known as some of his contemporaries, he was responsible for some of the largest scores in pirate history. Just like Calico Jack, however, he had to start somewhere and began his career as a member of Pirate Captain Henry Jennings' crew, where he scoured shipwrecks and raided vessels for his fortune. Then his luck took a turn. When Henry Jennings stepped down after receiving his pardon from the King of England, Charles did not. Instead, he took on Henry's role, where he quickly garnered a reputation as a vicious and violent man. Reports claim that he was a brutal captor, torturing and killing many prisoners from the boats he had raided. He was aggressive and strict with his crew too, which may have played a part in his ultimate removal from power. 
One of Charles Vane's most notorious feats was his capture of Nassau in 1718. Captain Vincent Pierce was sent to coax more pirates into surrender, targeting men like Charles and his crew who had refused the king's pardon. After a scuffle, Charles was captured, but his fellow pirates managed to secure his release. Following this, Charles actually temporarily did accept the pardon, only to capture a Jamaican sloop a month later, on which he returned to Nassau to take his revenge on Vincent Pierce. After constant harassment from the pirates, Pierce left Nassau and the port came under Charles' control. Nassau would eventually be taken back, but Charles didn't give it up without a fight, setting fire to a captured French ship and launching it into the opposition. A path was cleared for Charles to escape, and he left Nassau on the run once again. It didn't end too well for Charles after he was abandoned by Calico Jack and his crew, however. Shortly after, a hurricane ran him aground on the Bay Islands, and he was stranded. When he ran into English ships, he attempted to join them under a fake name, but was recognised, arrested, and subsequently hanged on the 29th of March, 1721. Sailing both across the Atlantic Ocean and through time to early 1300s Brittany now, we meet Jean de Clisson, the feared and revered Lioness of Brittany, an early European pirate famous for her brutal acts of revenge. As a young woman, Jean would wed twice, and it was her second marriage to Olivier de Clisson that ultimately sparked her career as a pirate. The couple lived happily, with the exception of a few legal proceedings regarding the sharing of their wealth until the War of Breton Succession began in 1342. Olivier fought in the conflict on behalf of the French, who were initially overtaken by English forces in the early stages of the war. Olivier was captured by the English, freed, and subsequently rearrested in Paris, accused by the French government of having conspired with English forces to let them win that initial battle. Much to his wife's dismay, Olivier was sentenced to death. Jean de Clisson, upon hearing this news, set to work on attempting to free him before it was too late. Attempting and failing to bribe the guards for Olivier's release, she soon found herself a wanted woman, also accused of treason. Miraculously though, she avoided the executioner's blade. Since she had no history of criminal activity, her court summons were revoked and she was set free. Olivier, however, was beheaded and left to hang from the walls of Paris. Jean was furious and swore revenge on the French crown. Selling all of her possessions to fund her next steps, she rallied a small army of 400 rebels and attacked multiple French fortresses, taking no prisoners as she went. The French crown retaliated by rallying forces of their own, who would soon be at Jean's doorstep looking for justice. She had to act quick. Her choice? She became a pirate. Using the funds she had gained from selling her belongings, Jean sailed to England where she sought assistance from Edward III. He helped her purchase three warships, decked out in contrasting black and red sails, an intimidating sight indeed. Known as the Black Fleet by her French targets, Jean spent the next 13 years of her life as a pirate, plundering, raiding, sinking, and burning French ships around Brittany's coast. Her method of attack was brutal. Target a ship, board it, kill all the crew except one man, take all the treasure, rinse, and repeat. Some reports claim that Jean personally slaughtered captains herself, decapitating them with the swing of an axe. Now known by survivors who encountered her as the Lioness of Brittany, Jean actually allied with the English when they invaded France in 1346. She assisted Edward III's men by guarding the coastlines as his armies crossed the Channel. She finally settled down with an English commander from the war, Sir Walter Bentley. They were soon married, but both died just three years after. Many reports claim that, out of all the pirates to ever set sail, Francois Le Honnene, a Frenchman born in 1635, was the cruelest, bloodiest, and most unpredictable. Beginning his early life as a servant to a wealthy landowner on the island of Martinique, Francois soon realised that his talents lied elsewhere. Abandoning his life as a servant in 1660, Francois soon joined up with a band of buccaneers in Saint Dominique, where he targeted Spanish ships across the Caribbean. His talents for robbing and killing men on board the merchant vessels of the West were soon observed by none other than the governor of Tortuga, who dabbled in piracy himself. The governor took Francois under his wing and provided him with a vessel of his own, a small ship in which he could go out on his own to raid and plunder. Notable for his particularly ruthless ways, Francois Lallonnet is often credited with being particularly brutal and skillful in his practical ways. He spent the next few years at sea, where he and his crew would find their fortunes by slaughtering and thieving many vessels, but his luck took a rough tumble just a few years after his career began, in 1663. Francois's ship was run aground on Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula, the ship was destroyed, but he and his men were alive. 
Wandering down the coast, it wasn't long before they encountered a party of Spanish soldiers who, due to the pirates' prominent behaviour of recent years, knew exactly who they were. The soldiers descended upon Francois and his men, and it was a bloodbath. Almost everyone was killed. The last man standing was, remarkably, Francois Lollonet himself, who proceeded to evade the receiving end of a flintlock pistol by ducking down among his dead companions and smearing his body with their blood. Desperately trying to feign death, Francois managed to wait out his attackers and soon fled to the coastline. Taking the clothes from a fallen Spanish soldier, he managed to release a crew of captured slaves on his way to the beach, who soon joined him in taking down a nearby Spanish vessel. Francois and his newfound crew butchered every single man aboard but one, telling him that he was to sail back to Havana, Cuba at once, to tell the governor there just who had done this. Eventually, Francois would fall in with Miquel de Basco, a fellow pirate who helped him amass a 600-strong crew spread out across eight different ships. From here, Francois took his revenge. Sailing to the Gulf of Venezuela, he and his flotilla tricked the defences of the Spanish-run towns he encountered there, leading his men round via land while his ships served as decoys. The city of Maracaibo was first. Francois overpowered the local guard, rounded up any escapees, and set to work torturing his victims, sniffing out every last piece of treasure the city had to offer. Satisfied, Francois carried on down the coast to the city of Gibraltar. His men managed to defeat all 500 guards stationed there, and then set to work on its citizens, sparing nobody in a bloody rampage. It would appear that Francois even started killing the locals just for the sake of it, be it revenge or otherwise. Money was not always a priority for him. He left the town in flaming ruins, taking 260,000 pieces of eight with him. It was in the late 1660s, however, when Francois began to meet his end. After a successful raid on Puerto Cabalos, the crew sailed for San Pedro, where they were intercepted by Spanish forces. He beat them, just, and decided to scare information out of his captives. Gripping his knife, plunging it into the chest of a fallen soldier and tearing out the heart, he demanded a cowering Spaniard to point him in the right direction and off they sailed. The issue with these later raids was that very little money could be obtained from them. As Francois travelled in the direction of San Pedro, he encountered poorer and poorer settlements, which could not sustain his disgruntled crew, who began to disband. He was eventually caught by local indigenous people while trying to evade his enemies, who, under control of the Spanish, cut Francois up into pieces and tossed him on a fire. A violent end for the most violent pirate ever to set sail. Shengi Sao, who lived from 1775 to her death in 1844, is better known by the name Ching Shi. Often dubbed the most successful pirate in all of history, she is known for terrorising the South China Sea from around 1801 to 1810. Aside from the fact that she potentially lived as a sex worker aboard a floating brothel, not much is known about her early life until she reached the age of 26, when she married a famous pirate by the name of Zheng Yi. Initially a privateer working for the Vietnamese crown, but when his cousin died, he inherited his massive fleet of pirate ships. Ching Shi assisted her husband with bringing order and structure to his new crews, and what was once a single fleet was turned into a dangerous confederation of six separate fleets, each run by their own leader. Zheng Yi controlled a grouping of ships known as the Red Flag Fleet, and when he died in 1807 in a gale at sea, Ching Shi quickly took over, ascending to the leader of the entire confederation of ships, at an alarmingly fast speed. From there on out, Ching Shi set to work on becoming the most feared force in the South China Sea. She started by luring Brigade General Ling Gui Lang, a senior military leader stationed in the Human Strait, into a trap, sinking his entire fleet of around 35 ships with ease. Lieutenant Colonel Lin Fa, another prominent officer, was next, who with the loss of his fleet put China in a difficult position. The country had lost half of its entire provincial fleet in just over one year. One of Ching Shi's most vicious and successful attacks happened in August 1809, when she ordered her fleets to conduct raids around several notable Chinese cities, Dongguan, Shendei, and Xinhui. One fleet would travel to each city with a view to looting and plundering anything they could, with Ching Shi herself heading to Xinhui with her own personal fleet. One of Ching Shi's captains, who was ordered to raid around the Shundi region with the Black Flag fleet, was particularly brutal. His raids over a period of a month and a half caused the deaths of over 10,000 people, and entire towns were levelled in his attacks. For much of the remaining year, Ching Shi and her men terrorised the Chinese coastlines, enforcing their power with an iron fist. 
At its climax, Ching Shi had taken command of the largest number of pirates ever to set sail. It wasn't just the Chinese that were targeted by Ching Shi and her men, however. British, French, and Portuguese colonizer and merchant ships were all at risk when sailing through her waters. Chinese villagers who fell victim to the Pirate Queen began to work for her, providing her ships with repair materials, food and drink, as well as weapons, which only increased her strength. It wasn't until 1810 when she retired, after finally suffering a defeat from the Portuguese Navy, assisting China in putting Ching Shi down. Accepting a pardoning offer from the Chinese government, Ching Shi retreated to Macau with her children, never having to worry about her wealth after her years of success. Born in Cork Island in 1700, Anne Bonny is best known for her time working with Calico Jack, whom we met at the beginning of this video. When Anne's father relocated the family to Charleston, she met James Bonny, a sailor. Without much wealth to his name, Anne's father grew furious at her decision to eventually marry James and disowned her. Anne and James then sailed over to New Providence, an island which served as a retreat for those evading the law or with nowhere to go. It's the very place where Edward Teach, otherwise known as Blackbeard, became a pirate around the same time. Roughly around 1718, Anne crossed paths with Calico Jack, who had recently taken control of Charles Vane's old ship, after casting him out to eke out a living on his own. Seizing her opportunity to become rich and powerful, Anne took to the seas with Jack, where she became one of the most powerful and feared pirates of her time. Female pirates were not common among the seas of the Caribbean in Anne's day, and as such, she reportedly took to disguising herself as a man, perhaps to evade capture, but also to blend in with the rest of her crewmates when at sea. Anne was reportedly a very violent pirate, along with her crewmate and close friend Mary Reed, who also joined Calico Jack's crew. When Jack and his pirates had captured a vessel, surviving sailors reported that it was Anne and Mary who would urge the pirates to torture and ultimately kill the prisoners on board. It was her savage behaviour and success as a pirate that soon saw her garnering a fearsome reputation. Governor Woods Rogers, shortly after Anne's ascension to piracy, published her name in his list of most wanted pirates in the Boston newsletter. Anne's career as a pirate was brought to an end in around 1718 when she was captured and hung for her crimes. Her exact date of death is not known, but she was given a stay of execution for a few months while she was due to give birth. Her last words to Calico Jack were reportedly, quote, Had you fought like a man, you need not have been hanged like a dog. From here, we don't exactly know what happened to her. The most likely scenario is indeed that Anne was hanged, but there are legends and rumours from the time that say she escaped the hangman. Whatever happened to her, she made a name for herself as one of the most feared pirates ever to set sail. You may have heard his name, but how much do you know about Black Bart? Born John Roberts in May 1682 in Wales, and subsequently changing his name to Bartholomew, he was actually, from a monetary perspective, the most successful pirate in the West at the time of the Golden Age of Piracy. He reportedly went to sea in roughly 1718, and was made second mate of the slave ship Princess in 1719, where he worked in the cruel and unjust transportation of slaves to the Americas. Shortly after his promotion, the princess was boarded by the pirate captain Howell Davis. The captain took pity on Bart, given his Welsh heritage, and forced him to join up with them, ultimately sparing his life. So Black Bart, one of the most famous pirates of all time, didn't even really want to become a pirate in the first place. Still, he took to the seas with Howell and quickly made a name for himself anyway. Garnering the respect of his fellow men, he was made captain when Howell was killed only six weeks after Bart joined up. To avenge his former captain, Bart took his men straight to the location of Howell's death to raid a nearby town and avenge his temporary mentor. Black Bart is best known for his attacks upon a treasure fleet from Portugal, sailing through the waters off the coast of Brazil several months after his ascension to the rank of captain. Bart sneakily slipped his ship in the convoy towards the back and followed silently. He and his men quickly boarded an adjacent ship, killing its men and taking control. Demanding that the ship's captain tell him which vessel was carrying the most valuable treasure, he set to work on capturing it. Deftly taking control, Black Bart and his men slaughtered the ship's occupants and took the treasure for themselves, before the guard ships even noticed they were gone. This was just the beginning. Over his career, Black Bart was known to have plundered almost 400 different ships, operating from North and South America to Africa. He was by far the most prolific pirate ever to sail the Atlantic Ocean, what made him such a cruel and notorious individual was his horrific treatment of captives. 
most notably shown in his capturing of the slave ship the Porcupine in January 1722. Eighty would-be slaves were being held below deck, and when the captain refused to pay Black Bart a ransom, he torched the ship, mercilessly killing every man, woman and child on board. What made Black Bart so terrifying in the first instance was the sheer force of his ship. A gigantic frigate which he named Royal Fortune, Bart had her decked out in 40 cannons, each with the capability of blasting a massive hole in the side of any unlucky vessel. Manned by 157 pirates, it wasn't just big, it was tough. Only a well-prepared navy could hope to defeat it. Unfortunately for Bart, that's exactly what happened. In 1722, when the Swallow, a man of war manned by British Navy forces, engaged Black Bart aboard the Royal Fortune in combat. Bart was killed almost as soon as the fighting began, a direct hit to his throat from a broadside cannon swiftly put him out of action. The remaining pirates on board soon surrendered, and the story of Black Bart came to a violent end. Although the misdeeds and infamous atrocities of some of these pirates seem terrifying, this is just scratching the surface. Over the course of history, many more pirates have taken to the seas, committing crimes worthy of such a video as this, but we've gone for the most feared and notorious in this one. These were simply just overviews of each individual, and there are many more stories to tell. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week for another video. Cheers!